In this problem, we have a ball with a mass of one kilogram. It is being pushed by a rod to follow this curved path. This path is in the vertical plane, therefore we do need to consider uh, weight. And the curved path is defined by the equation r equals to 0 0.5 theta. So as you can see, we are already given the r and theta um, coordinate system. Um, so in this case, theta is in radian and r is in a meter. r is the radial coordinate and theta is the transverse coordinate. At this instant shown, theta equals to half a pi. And the rod has an, an angular velocity, theta dot, which is simply d theta dt, the time derivative of the angular position. And that is 2 radian per second. And theta double dot, that is the second time derivative of the angular position theta, which can be considered as the uh, uh, angular acceleration of the rod. Um, and that is 4 radian per second squared. We need to determine the acceleration of the ball as well as the force the rod exerts on the ball. So, as I said earlier, because the R theta coordinate system has already been set up, uh, we are going to use the um, uh, cylindrical coordinate system to solve this problem. Therefore, we can write that the acceleration along the radial direction, AR equals to R double dot minus R theta dot squared and a theta equals to r times theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot. So we're going to use these two equations directly. So because according to this formula, this equation, r equals to 0 0.5 theta, therefore r dot equals to dr dt, which is a time derivative of r, and we're going to use the chain rule from calculus. So that equals to dr d theta times d theta dt. dr d theta is a constant 0 0.5 and d theta dt equals to theta dot. And then r double dot equals to dr dot dt. And we just derived r dot equals to 0 0.5 times theta dot. Therefore, 0 0.5 is a constant, so 0 0.5 times d theta dot dt. And this term right here is simply the second time derivative of theta. And that equals to 0 0.5 times theta double dot. So at theta equals to half a pi, theta we are given that theta dot equals to 2 radian per second, theta double dot equals to 4 radian per second squared. So we plug those into the equations. We can evaluate AR to be 0 0.5 times theta double dot, which is 4, that's the R double dot part, minus R, R at this point equals to 0 0.5 times half a pi, times theta dot square, which is two squared. And we evaluate that, that equals to negative 1.142 in the unit of meter per second squared. And then a theta equals to, from this equation, r, again, 0 0.5 times half a pi times theta double dot, which is four. All right, and then plus two times r dot, which is, um, 0 0.5 times 2 times r, uh, theta dot, which is 2. And that equals to 7.142 meter per second squared. So we basically evaluated AR a theta from these two equations by substituting uh, the known values. So from there, we can determine the total acceleration of the ball, which equals to AR squared plus a theta squared. And square root and that equals to 7.23 meter per second squared. So that answers the first part of the problem. Moving on, we need to determine the force the rod exerts on the ball. So for that, we need to start with a um, free body diagram. So the ball is subjected to its weight, which equals to it's 
uh, mass is one kilogram and then acceleration is 9.81 so that's 9.81 newton it is also subjected to a force and a push that the rod is pushing on this ball and this force from the rod is going to be normal to the rod therefore it's in this direction this is the force we need to solve for and then also because the ball is being supported by this surface it's also subject, subjected to a normal force from the surface and this normal force is perpendicular to a tangent line of this curve at this point so we completed the free body diagram now for the kinetic diagram We have acceleration along the, the sorry, radial direction, AR. And then we also have acceleration along the transverse direction, A theta. So now we're almost ready to write our Newton's second law, set up our equations of motion. Except that we right now, we are not sure what the direction, the normal force is. We know that W is along the negative R direction. The force F is along the positive theta direction. But at this point, we don't know what the direction, uh, the, the normal force has. But if you remember the other formula, if we draw a line that is a tangent to the path at this point, and this is our po positive R direction, then this angle psi here can be evaluated. So this angle psi here can be evaluated to be inverse tangent r over dr d theta. So dr d theta is a constant 0.5. r is 0.5 times half a pi. Therefore, this becomes tangent inverse uh, simply half a pi. And that is not half a pi, by the way tangent inverse half a pi, if you evaluate that, that equals to 57.5 degree. So this is angle psi here. Therefore, if our normal force is in this direction, this is our normal force, okay? Then it will have two components, one along the negative theta direction, and that equals to normal force times cosine uh, 57.5 degree because this angle right here is the same as psi here okay these two angles are both 57.5 degree and the normal force will also have a component along the positive r direction that will be n times sine 57.5 degree so now we're ready to write our equations of motion so resultant force along the theta direction and that is the positive theta direction equals to our unknown force f minus, we just men mentioned that we have a normal force times cosine 57.5 degree negative sign because it's uh, pointing to the negative theta direction. And that equals to m a theta, m is one, a theta has been evaluated to be 7.142. So this again equals to 7.142. And then we have the resultant force along the radio r direction this is our positive r direction and that equals to we already said that normal force has a component along the positive r direction and we have the weight which is along the negative r direction 9.81 and that equals to m times a r which equals to 1 times negative 1.142 right here which equals to negative 1.142 so from here, we can determine, uh, we have two equations, two equations with two unknowns, F and N. So from here, we can solve for both of them. So our normal force equals to 10.3 Newton. And then our um, force, this is the force from the rod to the, the, the ball. And that is 12.7 Newton.